Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. <laughs> Good I am, call. I am Etienne, and I'm here today with Voltaire and <laughs> Diderot. 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 The old cyclopede. Mike and I are named after dogs, though. <laughs> yeah, we're named after the dogs. Um, they probably will not make an appearance tonight, but they're around. Yeah, no. I think they I think they tucked in early. Yeah, well they're here in spirit, so <laughs> Ghost Dogs. Ghost dogs. What are you drinking, Mike? Hmm. I mean Voltaire. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so alright. This this is a little bit of a little bit of local history, and it's not even history because it was a, like an incredibly long time ago. But this is uh I'm drinking uh Lagunitas, which is uh brewery. Wait, did you say it's not history because it was a long time ago. Well, I may have misspoken. It was his. It, it's not history because it wasn't that long ago. Okay. Well, it's it's you know a couple years back. But so Lagunitas, I guess, had an issue with some people that had badges and were wanting paperwork signed with names and social security numbers and stuff. And because of God that, damn gangsters. Yeah, gangsters, right? With badges and. Um, so this particular uh, batch that they came out with, and this is, I'm, I'm assuming, from the same yeast or the same recipe, was called Undercover Investigation Shut Down. Because that's exactly what happened, is that they were, you know, it was early on when the, uh, from what I understand, when the brewery got going, when they were brewing the beer, and I guess somebody was either doing something off of the books off of the books, oh my god! Or I think they may have been distilling, Ooh, making some better alcohol, you know. But anyway, so word got around that something fishy was going around the brewery. So the 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 the, the clipboard and pencil brigade showed up to write some nasty letters and sign here, and you're such a bad, terrible person. We'll see you in court. Huh? So that's where the name of this beer comes from. And that's how I, I saw it. I had to snatch it. I'm like, yeah, that one. But how does I'm... it taste? Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's good. No, it's, it's honestly like it's, um, it's, it's um, if I were to call it the taste of it, it would be like a brown IPA. Hmm. Like it's. So it's like a brown ale, but hoppy? Yeah, a little hoppy, but not like crazy hoppy. You know, so... Not like that 600 IBU. Yeah, none of that, like, you know, it's just, like, stomach bomb. Like, oh, you thought you ate well today? No, you just had this beer that had a whole lot of hops into it. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. So what's the, uh, the topic of tonight is... The Oregon standoff. Holy fuck, something topical. God damn, this could be a scary episode. They might show up next week. We are not naming it the truth of, though. Oh, yeah, no, no, I, uh, you know. That's a good point. Because we are making shit up as we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, history behind what's going on, or what was going on out there? Okay, so, I mean, realistically, it started probably... March of 1775, um, <laughs> somewhere uh, Lexington Green, <clears throat> Massachusetts, and let's uh, fast forward a little uh, bit. All right, okay. So, <laughs> all right, so let's fast forward a little bit. Okay, so what happened uh, uh, three or four weeks ago? Uh, are we so we're going from the beginning of the situation? Beginning of the okay, beginning. All right, beginning of the beginning. So. Um, from what I am to understand is that there was a couple of individuals who owned some... And a man named Bundy. Yeah, yeah, actually he's involved. So we're getting to that, but so there was a, um, a couple of ranchers, and the reason why it wasn't just that, you know, I, I think the, a lot of the way the, the media was portraying it is that uh, Eamon Bundy, the guy who's the son of uh, the rancher down in mm-hmm. Nevada. Uh, what was his name? The first name. Yeah, I know. I'm terrible. I don't know. Uh, you put, put me on the cross, right? So I can't remember his first name, but, you know, the, the father, his son, Eamon Bundy, ended up, you know, up in the Oregon situation. 
so before we get How to... How did that happen? Well, because he heard about the situation and... Well, okay, so he ended up up there because what happened with them up in Oregon was incredibly similar to what happened in Nevada. Okay. That, that the is. Bureau of Land Management, which for, I think, a lot of, you know, American culture of the past 20, 30 years has been fairly, you know, docile Bureau of Land Management. Oh, they just... Do you think so? Yeah. For the most part. That's why I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm with my caveat. You did up in Idaho. <laughs> I did. You know, and that's why Steve is a part of this also, because that's the, how you got here. The BLM owns something like 75% of Idaho. Yeah. And like 86% of Nevada. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. already like 50% or more of Oregon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and, and so this is important. This is, no, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, so what was going on with Oregon was that this these couple guys that owned a ranch, the BLM wanted them to sell their land, and they couldn't just... Okay, so would it, with eminent domain... The the guys with badges don't like to just throw out eminent domain like this is the big dick of the law. Yeah. Eat it. You know, yeah. they like to make it seem like they have another reason to do what they want to yeah. do. Yeah. Like, oh, well, you know, like within Nevada with like the Bundys, it was like, well, okay, so we... We we don't want to kick you off the land, but what we need this to do is that we're gonna we're gonna build uh, solar panels, ah, uh, you know, and which was which was accurate, you know, it was um, who's the senator from Nevada, uh, Harry Reid, Harry. yeah, Harry Reid, like yeah, he was in on that. His son owned like this company, and there was the whole idea is that they're gonna get that land and put up solar panels. So it, it was a similar situation up in Oregon where like. Not necessarily they're going to put up solar panels, but the BLM up in Oregon, they're just like, well, we just like we just need a little bit more land because the federal government only just needs a little bit more, right? <laughs> Isn't how it was? They just want a little bit more every time, just a little bit more. So they're 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 trying to edge these ranchers out and these particular. Let me get my nose just a little bit farther into the tent. Yeah, exactly. Just a little bit more. So so these ranchers didn't want to go, and um, of course, what happened? The feds just came up with some bullshit like well you um you weren't uh, you were grazing on uh, such and such an acre maybe we can prove it maybe we can you owe us some money so so and so and so don't have to prove it because they're not the law they're just regulators exactly and then and that's a really that, that's a very um uh key difference between the uh without going uh too off off topic that's the key difference between the uh, uh, American Revolution and the French Revolution is that the French Revolution was much more like, well, you've got your, you know, your, you, you got your ticky. You, you submitted to the authority a little bit. Whereas with the American Revolution, was, there, was, there was no authority whatsoever. The French Revolution, there was a little bit more of it. Like, yeah, you, you, you still <coughs> paid your little bit of a ticky, and you still get a little bit of a ticky, and you can do what you got to do. All right, so... This whole situation will be explained by the title. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they, um, those ranchers, they were being pushed around by the BLM to the point where it was, you know, getting pretty hairy between them and how you define that is kind of iffy. But at one point or another, they decided they needed to burn some anchorage that was owned by them. For whatever reason, they decided they needed to burn it, okay? Which is not crazy. If you own that much property where you're like, oh, yeah, my 150 acres over there, I got to burn that whole fucking thing, that's not crazy. Just be like, that whole thing has got to go. Like, that's a lot of land, but if you own that much land, 150 acres ain't shit. So they're like, yeah, we got to burn that. And so I don't know if they got permission or not to burn it. Does it really matter? Because do you need permission to burn anything on your own land? right you're listening so (laughs) you know so it uh it it ended up the fire ended up spreading onto blm land and so the feds were just like oh looks like a clear case of arson (laughs) oh it looks like you just committed some arson oh so you guys are going to jail so i guess in the 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 initial weird thing with with having to do with some fines and stuff they um 
they were in jail, they were released, and in the process of the second trial, because the feds are fucking assholes like that, they were the, pro- the second trial was still going on after they had been released, so the determination for the second part with having to do with the arson was still up there, so they were going to have to go back into jail if they're found guilty, right? So the determination was, you are guilty, you have to go back into jail. So they go back into jail, or they're going to go back in jail, and... Um, couple of the local guys plus uh, Eamon Bundy and some other people who may or may not, they try to paint him as racist, whatever, you know, you may not be able to really determine that, um, uh, occupy this little BLM office, which was mothballed for the season because it was the winter. It was just, oh, well, it's November and it's fucking cold and it's Oregon. We're just going to let that sit there. We'll come back in the spring. So if you're going to occupy anything, well, hey, guess what's probably the least harmful? That BLM office, which is practically like a small house, if that. You know, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay, well, so this is ours and it's winter and nobody cares. But, of course, the feds care because they're the feds. Oh, well, that's ours. (laughs) <laughs> you can't occupy that during the winter. Hey, were you going to be here anywhere in the time between now and, like, February or March? No, 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 no. Yeah, we're probably going to show up April 1st. Oh, okay, so, but we can't be here while you're gone? No, 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 because you're you're terrorists. You see? That's how that goes. You're terrorists. So, so now you <laughs> occupied something they weren't even going to do a damn thing with for a couple of months. And so you're terrorists. And, um... So, uh, so should we just jump to what happened with the shooting, Steve? What do you think? Or okay, well, <laughs> all right then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got I got a couple questions here. Okay. Like, why did they occupy the building? What did they? What were they like hoping to accomplish with that? Um. I can't answer that because I'm not in personal contact with anybody up there or anybody who has been up there, so I can't know for sure. But I would say that it is a occupation along these same lines. Again, my opinion, I wasn't there. I don't know anybody who was there. My opinion would be that it is an occupation on the same lines of, of, of well, this is a protest of we are being oppressed and we have come to this conclusion that simply what you have claimed to be yours is no longer yours we we didn't we didn't excavate anybody from that situation that's the thing that's really key about that Oregon situation is that they did that you know they kind of make it seem like they go like well they occupied this BLM office nobody was fucking there so when they would make it seem like, oh, no, they occupied it. Okay, yeah, they showed up, and they said, hey, look, the lights work, and they fl- flush the toilet. Oh, the toilet flushes. Okay, I guess we're going to hang out here for a bit. It's, um, <coughs> you know, it's it's not an occupation. This, this goes into things we've talked about in the past when it comes to the narrative of the situation, you know. Hmm. Tell us about the, uh, what's this about... Like snacks or something. I've seen a lot of memes oh, like that. Oh, snacks. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I had a, uh, a you know a little bit of uh, stress going on in my life. So uh, I there's a little bit of a blur there, but uh, part <laughs> of it comes with the Facebook feed of snacks and snacks and why didn't you send snacks and we've got some snacks and memes about snacks. Uh, th- uh, I, I think it's mentioned in uh, not the last show I was on, but... One before that, that, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Mike Benoit, died. He was the chair of the county party. We had our convention coming up. So the past couple weeks for me has been like this weird blur of me just trying to get things together to try to make it seem like, ah, county convention, it went well. Um, Or at least be a part of it. Uh, Anyways, so um, going to, going to, going to connection from what Steve said and here I am snacks Um, (laughs) yeah hey you know what it's amazing when it comes to snacks um ho-hos are really good ho-hos are underrated ho-hos are underrated Um, you heard it here folks first folks ho-hos are underrated (laughs) but uh yeah okay so they were ho-hos or ho-hos 
ho hos. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, so they, they had a little bit of a lack in provisions, or rather, they were simply like, oh, well, we're, it's, this stocks, we're in the middle of nowhere, we're, you know, we're, people are sending us MREs, which are like, you know, what is it, like 2,000% of your sodium for the fucking week? <laughs> is that what it is? Like, MREs are terrible for you, you're like, you really shouldn't eat them unless you're like really legitimately going on to like a 12-hour march. So, you know, so they're living off of that shit, probably. And so they said, like, hey, can we get some snacks? And so that's where that whole meme of, like, hey, can we get some snacks? They're kind of sitting there thinking, like, can we get anything but this fucking survivalist bullshit? You know, please, thank you. And so that, that became a little bit of a meme. But, uh, so, to... Well, and I get a little bit, though, uh, having some experience in the military... Being overseas, what do you always ask your your family for when they ask if they uh, what they should send? Mm-hmm. Snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get some ding dongs or something. I mean, for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah. So th- so th- you know, it was a um, it was like a kind of a semi organized thing. You know, I mean, there was a number of people up there. Um, this is why I don't get. Mm. They were flying the American flag while fighting oh, against yeah, the yeah, American yeah, yeah, yeah. government. Yeah, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so let's throw this out there. Talk about getting some hate mail. I'm going to say this. Please, somebody, somebody respond to this question. What good has come under the 50-star flag? I'm just going to drop that right there. <laughs> what good has come under the 50-star flag? Not 48. Don't think about World War II. I'm talking about 50. 50 star flag. What good has come out with the 50 star flag? I don't think World War II was good. Okay, well, then you're even, you're even beat with the 48 there. Yeah. Well, yeah, war in good. general is not good. No, war is never good. So, so you're right. So, the, and, and to, to put that in the frame of like, okay, well, so, so these guys are, are, Occupying a building that which is not going to be occupied for three or four months, so they're simply saying, "Okay, hey, so we've got some people that we are sympathetic towards. They're being imprisoned for something that we don't think that they should be imprisoned for." Is this essentially what it was? Okay, so all right, so they were they had some friends that were in prison for things they didn't think they were in prison for. Now, very important point of fact that the people who were being thrown in jail said that they are not affiliated with the people who are (coughs) occupying that office. So that should be mentioned that, and very key, that the people who are being thrown in jail are like, oh, we don't don't know those guys, or we're not affiliated with them. Which, I don't know about you, but if I'm thrown in jail for something that you guys weren't involved with, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not affiliated with you. It means that I got involved in some shit that you weren't a part of. So when they're saying like, oh, I'm not affiliated with them, I don't know them, we're not, like, they don't agree with it, there's a little bit of a gray area there. And, um, and to, to, to put a little bit of a tangent on this, I, I think it would be important to say that um, early on in the... Um, in <laughs> In the uh, in the American Revolution, there is letter, letters going back and forth where they're saying like, "Oh well, you know, I mean, the king ain't so bad." No, 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 no. But they're just throwing that out there as kind of like camouflage, like, "Oh well, yeah, hey, the king ain't so bad, and yeah, sure, God save the king and whatever." And they would just throw that out there as kind of like, "Oh well, you know, they'll read this, but what we're really talking about is well, it's it's coming, it's going down right now, you know." <laughs> so, um, so there's that that okay. So were those people? being thrown in jail where they're affiliated with them or not. We will never know for a fact. And I my brain tends to go towards you if I'm being perfectly honest that they probably knew who the people were who were occupying this little house in the middle of nowhere. Did they give them the okay? Probably not. But they were probably knew them in the sense of like, well, I know some local activists who I don't work with all the time, but if I heard their name and they were doing something, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, okay, I know that guy. It doesn't mean that like, I, I talked to him and said, like, okay, yeah, they occupy that building. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the other thing, too, is, like, you know, it's, it's, 
<coughs> I, I think because of the way that that news works nowadays, we we think it's it's so much more organized than it really is. You know, there you know we think like, oh well, here's the story. Let's broadcast this, or at least that's how the media works. Uh, here's the story. Let's broadcast this, and let's have a reaction of our broadcast that we made, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but the fact of the matter is, is like in any story, it's never really like this. What it came down to is a bunch of people who are pissed off and said, well, okay, so I know a guy who's pissed off because some ranchers got arrested for some bullshit they should have gotten arrested for, right? And so he go- goes and joins his friends that were occupying this little BLM thing, and then he talks to some of his friends, and they go, hey, what are you doing this weekend? He goes, hey, you know what? Some of my friends were really pissed off about this whole BLM thing, so they showed up here. And they go, oh, okay. And so whether they joined or not, but it's just like it's individual, like one-on-one communication. Hey, I think this is fucked up. I'm going to go be there. Hey, I think this is fucked up. Uh, you know what? Like, I have to do this, 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 and that. I, I can't be there, you know? But, yeah, it's it's all, all that was is that, like, people, like, the, the media likes to portray it. It was all fucking organized, and they all knew what they were doing. They are all on the same page. It was just kind of a bunch of people who were like, you know what? No, this is the, 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 the feds are fucked up, which I think – Everyone, yeah, one hundred percent of the country would agree that the feds are fucked up. The whole fucking country thinks the I feds think are. I hundred percent. hundred percent. Congress has an eleven percent uh, approval rating. <laughs> so somebody doesn't think that they're. Okay. Out. All right. All right. So there's there, there's some people that are heavily medicated. <laughs> some people that are heavily medicated and don't see the sunlight too much who think that the feds are doing okay, but most of the population <laughs> thinks that the feds are fucked up. So uh, you know, so to, to to paint this wide cloth of well, it's it's these it's these angry ranchers who don't want to pay their fees for grazing and they're racist because they're white and they have cowboy hats, you know, whatever. You know, it seemed like it was just this really grasping for straws sort of a thing. So I don't fa- understand the point of it, though. I still, I don't, I don't get that at all. Mm. Like, why this place in particular? Why do this at all? What do you expect to come from this? I, I see absolutely no good coming from something like that. Um... I'll I'll agree with you for um, I don't know to to infer what you're saying. Um, I'll agree with you for a, a, a good chunk of that. That um, okay, what well, good could come from that? Well, so ultimate goal, you know, what is it? Okay, so 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 Washington D.C. and all that. Oh, they're just all gone now. Oh, great, great. So you get some some marble that somebody else used to live in. Oh, super. Oh, okay. Well, so they're, so those guys used to have the marble. Now we have the marble. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, uh, you know, I, okay, so, so storming the ramparts and getting somebody else's marble doesn't solve the problem. It makes right. it look like it solves the problem is what but it I does. But what I'm saying is I don't even see it going that far. I don't. I see like literally nothing coming of this. Some guys get made fun of in Oregon. A couple of other people might see them as heroes, mm-hmm. but nothing more will come of it. Okay. I don't think. All right, and I'm not disagreeing with you there at all. Actually, like I'm kind of like. Agreeing. And they're not gonna. They're not gonna win anything. They're eventually gonna get arrested or shot. Like is what happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they and already the were. Yeah, I think they already were. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, 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 I agree with what you're saying that, but that's, I I think what is key to, um, not just the situation at hand with Oregon, which, I mean, Oregon, it could be Nevada, it could be Montana, it could be Michigan, it could be fucking Florida, it could be West Virginia. It doesn't fucking matter. It just, there's some place where the feds are just being fucking dicks and they just pushed a couple people too far and they just said, fuck it, we're not going anywhere, okay? So, you know, but the, the key thing is, is that when it comes down to it, it is what, what is it that made 
this geographical location of people so kind of like different and forward thinking. It was the fact that it was just like, oh, well, I don't at least need to listen to so and so because so and so is a couple hundred miles away. Fuck him. <coughs> like no, seriously. Like you don't think they didn't say fuck him in the colonies? That in fucking Virginia they weren't just like, oh yeah, well, so King so and so. Wait, hold on. Where's King so and so? So dude, King's... I'm out here dealing with fucking bears. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. King so and so from London. So wait, not not just like you know some city somewhere, but some city that was like across the Atlantic Ocean said, hey, you got to do this, right? And so some some bear trapper in fucking North Carolina is just like, King so-and-so says, what? I got to pay taxes on my plane cards? No, seriously, look that up. Stamp tax, taxes on your plane cards. It was a fucking thing. Wait, wait so I got to pay taxes on my fucking, like, 52 deck? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Mill nowhere, North Carolina, fuck you. So, like, yeah, that's the, that's the sort of thing. Is that, like, okay, so I, I think when it, when it comes to the ranchers in a... Um, and I and I don't want to say anything. I don't want to make this look in in a bad sense against anybody who was involved in that because I don't want to to take lightly the fact that a gentleman was killed and a couple people are now in cages because of what happened. Yeah. But um, but to think of it in a in a more historical perspective is. That yeah, that's what happened two hundred some odd years ago. Quite literally. Now I I think that now saying that, um, that's important to put it in a in a historical context. Right. But what's the problem with that? What happened with the American Revolution? Well, here we are, two hundred years later. Same bullshit. <laughs> it's not a king. But we got a guy who it's says he's the president. Might as well be emperor. Even worse. <clears throat> Gee, I mean, seriously. The, the, the American colonies revolted over what was an accumulation of tax of less than 10%. Yeah, right. Here we less go. than 10%. And you have your average, you know, Joe Sixpack working for somewhere between 27% to 33%. And think about that. Like, okay, so they revolted for a tax. Well, part of their revolt. It wasn't just the tax, but that was part of it. Because that's the thing. You've got you to be a little bit objective. There was way more to the American Revolution than just the tax. But, um, you know, for less than something that was what people pay every day off their fucking paycheck. You know, oh, I got my cubicle and, you know, I wore my 12 pieces of flair but we and, get a lot more for that now, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have, I have... A lot more regulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And talk about what I... A lot more I, bureaucracy. Yeah. You want to know what I get out of the situation? I get five glowing rectangles versus my ancestors didn't have any glowing rectangles. <laughs> Think about that one. They didn't have any glowing rectangles. I get to look at a glowing rectangle that tells me what the news is. Oh, that's something. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, like our brains aren't that's, really. What does that have to do with taxes, though? I don't know. Well, uh, control. Uh, <laughs> no, no, seriously, wait for it. Like, uh, let me bring it back into the fold. We're not. Our brains aren't geared towards like looking at shiny objects all day. And you tell me what a glowing rectangle that is. Either your 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 cell phone or your computer screen is. It's a fucking glowing shiny fucking object. We looked at shiny objects because we were like, oh, well, that might be worth something kind of valuable and we may be able to get the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's shiny and you know who looks, else likes shiny things is that, that girl at the other tribe over there. Yeah, well, you know, we might be friends if I give her some shiny stuff and she may not like it. She may, but, you know, whatever, we're going to give it a shot. So, you know, it, it's shiny <laughs> things or it's, it's, it's a very big part of, 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 of human civilization. So... Um, shiny shit, man. <laughs> no, shiny shit is kind of like a little bit of a... It's a distraction. Speaking of which, shiny things. Shiny things. With hydraulics. Mm, mm. Right. So, if we were to have like... 
Okay, so in the future, once the BLM is gone <laughs> and the feds have, like, disappeared from their, like, marble structures, because it's just marble. It's just a collection of marble and some rebar and some, you know, some, some words that were practically religious of, like, oh, so, uh, you know, we I mean, bless this. And, uh, well, no, I mean, it is, like, I mean, I... Uh, um, Oh, God damn, we, have, we totally have time for this. We totally have time for this. This is important. Okay, if you look at the wall of the Senate chambers, there is... We're already running over, you know. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, no, this is totally... This is going to be a part of it. So, um, there is... Uh, if you look at the wall of the Senate chambers, when you know, on C-SPAN, whatever they're doing, the thing, there is uh, an object on both sides of the Senate chambers, and it's a bunch of rods, and there's an axe in the middle of it. Fascist. Well, that, that goes back from... Yeah, well, fascist. Yes, essentially, you know, t- to the point... But it goes back to all the way back to Rome. So if we're talking about like, well, you know, if there's anything or like, it's well, a symbol of authority. Yeah, it's a symbol the of fascia. Authority. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the fascia. <laughs> That's where fascia. Yeah, comes exactly. From. Fascia was this, was this bundle of rods with the axe in the middle. Is that if you got out of line, you got beat with a rod. If you got two out of line, you got. Well, your head was gone with the axe. So that that's where that comes from. So, you know, that's the thing is like, you know, you know, the whole authority thing, that's how far it goes back. You know, even to our current day, the the government as it is is trying to tie it back to fucking you know, even before Julius fucking Caesar for fuck's sake. The new Rome? Yeah, exactly. The new Rome, which was, was supposed to be St. Petersburg too at one point or another. So let's continue that meme onward mm-hmm. until we fucking Spend even lose even more of our tax dollars, our 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 lives, our treasure, our our future into this fucking black hole <laughs> that we might call you know Washington D.C. that they called St. Petersburg at one point, that they called Rome at one point. It's just just yeah. On the other hand, you have robot sex. On the other hand, you do have robot sex, which may at least make me feel comfortable from time to time. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.